want to talk about like when I started, you know, going to school and stuff, a lot of people put me down. You know what I mean? Like people tease each other. I mean, people come up and say, hey, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat. You know, you're like, lose some weight. And you're like, you go home and you look at yourself in the mirror and go, ah, I'm fat, right? And so many people tease each other. Oh, you know, you're too short, you're too tall, you look whatever. You know, different hair and all that. It doesn't matter. See, the thing is, when you're in school, when you're growing up in life, it actually sort of matters to people how you look. And then it matters to you because it matters to others. Why? Why does it matter how you look? Because if they don't like you, then who will? If they don't accept you, then who will? And the fear that we have is that we're going to be alone. That we're not good enough. And, you know, we have to change ourselves. And, you know, so many people put me down and say, Nick, you look too weird and no one's really your friend and you can't do this and you can't do that. And I couldn't change anything. It's not like just fixing my hair one day and everything's fine. It's not like, you know, just whatever. I couldn't change my circumstance. I couldn't just one day wake up and say, hey, give me arms and legs. I need arms and legs. You know what I mean? Like, I went to a bodybuilder, you know, and said, can you make me some arms and legs? No, I'm joking. <laughs> bodybuilder, you get it? <laughs> right? This is the thing. You know, I go up to people, can you give me a hand? You know, I'm just joking. Yeah. But it was so hard because people put me down. And I started believing that I was not good enough. I started believing that I was a failure. That I'd never ever be somebody who people would like or people would accept. And it was so hard, man. I thought to myself, I, you know, I can't go on, the, go on the soccer field like everybody else. And I can't ride my bike and I can't skateboard and all these sort of things. And I started getting depressed. I thought, what kind of purpose do I have to live? I mean, do you, are, are you just here to live, to die? I mean, is there not a purpose for me? Is there not a purpose in life? And I had questions and no answers. And I asked my mom and dad, why did this happen? I asked doctors, why did this happen? They, they don't know. There are some things in life that are out of your control that you can't change and you've got to live with. The choice that we have, though, is either to give up or keep on going. I want to ask you, what are you going to believe? Are you going to believe in yourself? Are you going to believe everybody else's judgment on you? Are you going to believe people when they say that you're a failure when no one really likes you, no one really cares about you? And it's not really to say that, hey, you need someone to come up and say, hey, really, I, I like you, I care about you. No, it's not that, but it's the fact that people put you down. People don't even look you in the eye. People ask you how you are, and you say fine, but you're not fine, and they'll, know, they'll never know that. I tell you, life is interesting. Life's a journey. See this phone here? Let's say that I want to go to the phone, right? And I start from over here. Now, to get to the phone... It's not like I'm going to start meditating and going hum, right, and float across the air, right? It's not, going to, it's not going to work. It's not like I'm going to go hum and woo, you know, it's not going to work. So I have to take one step at a time, one step at a time, one step at a time. You can only take one step at a time. I don't care how big your step is, it's only one step at a time. You can't do two steps in one. You understand? So it's like one step at a time and... You take steps in this direction, you take steps in that direction, sort of get lost along the way, and sometimes you fall down. Now, to illustrate my point, I'm going to jump off the table, do a back twist, and land on the floor. Okay? Is that cool? Are you ready? Oh, there's a clock there. Okay, can you move the clock for a second, please? Beautiful, beautiful. All right. You ready? So, uh, are you guys ready? Just let me know when you're ready. Are you ready? Okay, ready? One... Two, I'm joking, man. Are you serious? <laughs> Just put the clock back there. If I did that, I'll break my arm or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> but honestly, along the way, you might fall down like this. Ready? <whistles> no? <laughs> Hello! Right. So what do you do when you fall down? Get back up. Everybody knows to get back up because if I start walking, <laughs> I'm not going to get anywhere. But I tell you, there are some times in life where you fall down and you feel like you don't have the strength to get back up. You, so, you so, sort of put a mask on your face when you come to school and pretend that everything's okay when it's not. And you go home and lay in your bed 
when no one's looking at you, when you don't have to impress anybody, and you're yourself. And fear comes in. You know the fear that you have as soon as you walk into the doors of your house. Maybe there's a broken home. Maybe you have doubt in your life. Maybe you don't know for sure what's going to be happening in the future and it scares you. Maybe you're, about, you, maybe you're worried about what people think of you, what people say about you. Just that fear paralyzes you. And I just want to ask you today, do you think you have hope? Because I tell you, I'm down here, face down, and I have no arms, no legs. It should be impossible for me to get back up. I mean, you go home and tie the legs and arms of your brothers and, and sisters and, and like push them down and see how long it's going to take to get back up. You know what I mean? You know, you can tell them that you'll see them tomorrow. You know what I mean? But this is the thing. It should be impossible for me to get back up, but it's not. You see, I will try 100 times to get up. And if I fail 100 times, if I fail and I give up, do you think that I'm ever going to get up? No. But if I fail, I try again and again and again. For as long as I try, there's always that chance of getting up. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's not the end until you've given up. And just the fact that you're here should persuade you that you have another chance to get back up. There's still hope. I'm not here today to tell you that I understand your pain. I don't know how it feels to be abused. I don't know how it feels to feel, quote, fat and you've got an eating disorder. I don't know how it feels to have a broken home. I don't know how it feels. But I know how it feels to have a broken heart. And I know how it feels to be alone. And I want you to know that I found my strength in Jesus Christ. And you're going to find your strength in whatever you find it in. But I just want you to know that it's not the end. It matters how you're going to finish. Are you going to finish strong? And you will find that strength to get back up like this. How did I get from depressed to who I am today? Because I tell you, I was depressed. When I was age eight, I used to concentrate on the things I didn't have. I wish I had arms and legs, and I wish I could do this. But what can I do? You see, I have a choice, and that's what I want to talk about today, choices. I can either be angry for not having arms and legs or be thankful for my chicken drumstick. And you see, I can still do a lot of things. At home, I can brush my teeth, comb my hair, get myself ready in the morning. And I'm traveling around the world. It, it's, it's amazing. But I had to ask myself a couple questions. And the first question was really, who am I? Who am I? I'm Nick Vujicic, but who is that? And it's funny how the friends around you sort of determine who you are. You change yourself. You come to school. And everybody swore around me at high school, so I started swearing. Why? Because it's the cool thing to do. Everybody swears. So I don't want to be left out. And I want to be accepted, so I started swearing. You go to a party, everybody's drinking, so you drink. Why? Why well, everybody else around me is doing a big deal. And you start losing yourself, and you start putting your security in temporary things. You start putting your happiness in things that won't last. You can get drunk all you like, but in the morning, you're going to be sober with a headache with the same problems. You want to be high the rest of your life on drugs? Everybody said, don't do drugs, don't do drugs. Well, why? Why do we even go there? It's either out of curiosity, peer pressure, or trying to escape reality, basically. I wasn't ready.
have no arms and no legs, but I'm very thankful that I have my little chicken drumstick here. <laughs> People freak out when they see me for the first time. It's so cool. I was at a water slide um, all by myself. Everyone obviously at the bottom of the slide is looking up and waiting for other people to come down. And here I come and they're freaking out. They're like, you know, like this. And I was so tempted to look at myself and go, what happened? You know? And there were times where I sort of looked at my life and thinking, well, I can't do this and I can't do that. And you keep on concentrating on the things that you wish you had or the things that you wish you didn't have. And you sort of forget what you do have. And there's no point, I believe, in my life where I wish I had arms, legs, I wish I had arms, legs, I wish I had arms, legs, because wishing won't help. But what I've seen in life are just a couple key principles. And the first thing that I've seen is to be thankful. It's hard to be thankful, man. I tell you, when I was eight years old, I, I sort of summed up my life and thought, I'm never going to get married. I'm, you know, I'm not going to have a job. I'm not going to have a life of purpose. What kind of a husband am, am I going to be? I can't even hold my wife's hand. It's a lie to think that you're not good enough. It's a lie to think that you're not worth anything. Oh boy. Woo! It's freezing. I can't feel my hands. <laughs> I love life. You know, so many people come and say, how come you smile so much? And I'm like, well, it's, it's, it's a long story. <laughs> but it's very simple at the same time. You see, it's very hard to smile sometimes in life. There are things that happen that you don't know and you don't understand and you don't know if you're going to get through it. You know, you go through your storms in life and you don't know how long this storm is going to be. And today I want to share with you some principles that I've learned in my life that you can use in yours. Being patient is beautiful. I, I tell you, it's the hardest thing. But I realize I may not have hands to hold my wife's hand. But when the time comes, I'll be able to hold her heart. I don't need hands to hold her heart. You know, it is scary to know how many girls have eating disorders. It is scary to know how many people are just angry at life because of their situation at home and angry at others. It's scary to know how many people actually feel like they're worth nothing. Every single girl right here, right now, I want you to know that you are beautiful. You are gorgeous just the way you are. And you boys, you're the man. On this DVD, I share my experiences in life of how I've overcome challenges, and seen a new, fresh perspective in life. To be thankful, to dream big, and to never give up. I speak to children, youth, and adults about key issues and principles that I've applied in my life that has given me the strength to conquer all that comes before me.